I'm here to sing a song. Oh, you got it right. So this is a kind of error in the argument that is being propounded because you are expecting a lecture here. And this is what is a fallacy. So whenever we talk about fallacies, we talk about understanding the errors that are there in the reasoning. Now these errors could be of various types. These could be formal errors or these could be informal errors. The idea is the speaker or the writer who is there is trying to manipulate the audience for some reason or the other. Now these for, uh, fallacies as we said could be formal or informal. Now let's understand the difference between the two. When I talk about formal fallacy it is a logical error that is there. So if I say all cats are black that's my first premise. My second premise is all dogs are black. Now these two animals I'm saying if they are, they are black. But on these two premise, I draw a conclusion that all cats are dog. Then this conclusion is irrelevant or it's not a correct conclusion. Or I could say it's an invalid deductive argument that has been done. And this is a kind of formal fallacy that exists. The next is the informal fallacies. Informal fallacies are of four types. We would understand those one by one. But let's first talk about what actually is an informal fallacy. When I say an informal fallacy, it is because of an irrelevant information that is present and this irrelevant information is given to the audience and when the audience examine it, it comes out to be incorrect and that is what is a informal fallacy is. Now this informal fallacy could be as I said of four types. First is the fallacy of relevance. Relevance means the premises are not relevant to the conclusion. Okay, so premises don't have any, I would say, uh, direct connection to the conclusion that are there or they are irrelevant. So that is what is fa fallacies of relevance. The next is fallacies of defective induction. When I say fallacies of defective induction, what does it mean? It means that the premise is relevant to the conclusion but is very very weak and it is so weak that the conclusion if i'm trying to rely on that it's a real failure or a blunder i could say because the fallacies and the premises are too weak to prove the conclusion by itself so that is defective induction the next is presumption the fallacies of presumption state that there is too much that is being assumed in a premise and that is what is a fallacy of presumption. The last is the fallacy of ambiguity. Ambiguity means the things are not very clear. So same part or the same phrase would have one meaning here and a different meaning there. And that's where we say it's ambiguous. Okay, so from the name, these are very, very clear. Now, as we talked about the structure, we have fallacies, formal and informal fallacy. In this lecture, we would focus only on the four major types of formal fallacies. Overall, we say there are around 15 important fallacies that exist. All of the rest would be part of the informal fallacies that we would be covering in the next class. And of course, this is a part of the Western philosophical ideas. Now, under these philosophies, we have three terms, ethos, logos, and pathos. Ethos means an argument that appeals to the ethics or the authority, so it's credible. And basically, there is a kind of... Uh, uh, attack on credibility we could say. The next is logos which is an argument that appeals to the logic. So if there is any unfair advantage of uh, the claims that are put by the speaker we would say it is logos and then you have pathos which is an argument that appeals to an individual's emotion. 
so they attach positive association to one who is speaking or the author's argument and negative association to the opponent's argument and that is what is pathos so we talked about ethos logos and pathos now talking about the very first kind of formal fallacy this is appeal to probability now a very good example there are lots of dark clouds in the sky and dark clouds mean rain so what does it mean i am not very sure that it would rain but just because there are dark clouds in the sky i say it would rain tonight and that is a appeal to probability because there is a dark cloud there are dark clouds which are present i feel or i believe it's highly probable that it would rain today and that's where we understand a fallacy which is appeal to probability it's not certain it's uncertain that it would rain but it's just highly probable the next is bad reasons fallacy which is also known as argumentum ad logicam now what is a bad reason fallacy always since a childhood you could understand if you have bad arguments then definitely the conclusion would be bad a child can say that dogs are afraid of height and with this statement a child can also say therefore dogs do not fly now the conclusion in itself is correct dogs do not fly but the argument associated to it is false dogs are afraid of height because of which they do not fly so the premise and the conclusion that you are trying to derive from the premise is not apt and therefore we say bad arguments lead to a bad conclusion as simple as that so this is a very direct example of bad reasons fallacy again a kind of formal fallacy because there is a logical problem that is associated to it the third logical problem is masked man fallacy and an intentional fallacy so keep it this way that uh, i am taking a class here and i am also your class teacher and there is also a class teacher in your class who appears very similar to me now as soon as you enter that classroom she scolds you very badly when you come back here you attend this lecture you feel i am the same person as she was in the classroom and you develop a perception in mind that i am very strict i am not a good teacher and that's how you develop your perception so what it is this is what is a masked man fallacy that means there are two persons who appear identical and their roles become interchanged so the person in the classroom is a totally different person a person here is a totally different person but you just believe that they two look identical and therefore you develop this fallacy that she, since the person in the classroom is strict this person here is also strict and that is what is a masked man fallacy or a intentional fallacy which it is also called as so again there is a logical problem and therefore it is a formal fallacy that it appears to be the next next is non sequitur non sequitur is a fallacy where conclusions are not drawn from the prepositions so let's say i have few statements here all dubliners are from ireland uh, person x is not a dubliner that that means person is not, person x is not from ireland now how do i relate the conclusion not to the given statements because my proposition says all dubliners are from ireland i do not know about people who are not dubliners so people who are do not dubliners i cannot state anything about them and therefore my conclusion which i am trying to derive is not from the preposition there is a logical problem that exists here a logical error that exists here and therefore this is again a part of the 
formal fallacy so today what we have understood are the four basic forms of formal fallacies we have understood each of those one by one with a unique example and in most of your papers you would have questions where you would be given examples and you would be asked which kind of fallacy it is so you must first understand whether it is a logical fallacy or it is a irrelevant information fallacy so first you decide whether it's a formal fallacy or a informal fallacy once you know it's a formal fallacy you know the types of formal fallacy once you know it's an informal you know what kind of informal fallacies are there and you can further bifurcate it down or break it down so understanding the very basics is important in today's lecture we have covered formal fallacies in the coming lectures we would be talking about informal fallacies so stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead for any doubts any questions feel free to post those as comment i'll be happy to entertain those